Handsome, talented and cheerful with an accommodating presence, Martin Milner is sure one of the wonder boys of television shows with his near-perfect boyish look that made him a charm to his generation. With his two hit TV shows, Route 66 and Adam 12, and the amazing collaboration with George Maharis, he established his name as a screen gem of the 1960s TV series. Did Martin Milner have a homosexual romance on set? What do you know about this cute gentleman and his friendly smile? Martin Milner is sure a quintessential heartthrob for television movie enthusiasts. If there is one thing most fans cherish about Milner, it is that perfect good guy outlook which he portrays with ease. Some people would admire his on-screen driving skills, much as they appreciated his natural attraction. Milner confidently interpreted two highly remarkable television shows with special skills using a car, fondly remembered as Officer Pete Malloy on Adam 12. Martin Milner's natural good looks, observers say, helped him become a huge star. As a kid, I still recall watching Adam 12, though I'm very sure the version I watched was the reruns, but I must confess that I was thrilled by Malloy's character. It was more like a voice of reason in the show. Martin Milner was such an excitement with his neatly kept hair, smart and stylish, put on. But there's also a side of him that is rarely talked about, his simplicity. Those who were opportune to meet him one-on-one -on -one said apart from signing an autograph instantly, he never had any issue posing for a photo shot. Martin Milner, no doubt, is a pride of his generation, a man who began his career as a teen actor and suddenly saw the limelight alongside his co-star George Maharis. Another iconic fellow that was beautifully paired in the legendary TV drama Route 66. Fans were fascinated watching the two handsome and fidgety young men wandering the highway in their crimson Corvette convertible. In the thrilling show, fans saw Milner as Todd Stiles, the gentleman born with a silver spoon. His happy upbringing takes a sad turn following the sudden demise of his father. The Todd character found himself broke because his father left him nothing but the latest Corvette. Maharis, on his part, played Buzz Murdoch, a tough and survivor of New York City's Hell's Kitchen. Together, the duo drove around the country in Todd's Corvette, encountering all kinds of people and getting involved with them somehow. The series is reported to have been inspired by Jack Carruke's creative fiction book On the Road. In case you were not opportune to witness the show, it also featured weekly guest stars in the persons of Robert Redford, Alan Alder and Gene Hackman, as seen in the initial roles. Martin Sam Milner was born in 1931 in Detroit, Michigan. He lived a fruitful life on earth, left an indelible legacy and would always be remembered as that fine American actor and radio host who made humanity happy with his performances on CBS Route 66, which aired for about four years, ending in 1964, and a sister programme, Adam 12, broadcast on NBC from 1968, and ending about seven years after. Milner is the son of Mildred, identified as a Paramount Theatre Circuit dancer, and Sam Milner, a construction hand and film distributor. The Milners were traced to Polish Jewish ancestry. When his parents left his place of birth and travelled from city to city before settling in Seattle, little Martin Milner was very tender, and by the time he was nine he already got himself involved in dramatic activities. There is a strong indication that he was inspired early enough as he became involved in school plays before joining a children's theatre group at the Cornish Playhouse. When his family relocated to Los Angeles, teenage Milner was very hopeful as he was connected to an acting mentor and later to an agent with the help of his parents. Not too long Milner was billed for his earlier screen test in his movie career for the Warner Brothers comedy film Life with Father. He was 15 when he appeared in that production, and significantly the movie is about a family of redheads known as the Days, and Milner happens to be the only natural redhead in the production. This implies that other actors had to change the colour of their hair to reflect redhead, with a report saying that tragedy was averted during the hair colouring process when the beauty salon performing the hair dyeing discovered that they ran out of water. Reports say to prevent the dyes from damaging the hair, they had to rinse the chemicals with cold cream. 
Little Milner was lucky with that because he was not involved with that behind-the-scenes comedy. Some days after that film was done, Milner got infected with polio and was lucky to bounce back to health within a year because Jonas Salk's polio vaccine was not yet introduced at the time. He returned to acting and had bit parts in two more movies before completing his studies at North Hollywood High School. Naturally gifted with a pleasant appearance, young Milner soon got a minor film in Sands of Iwo Jima that starred John Wayne. Milner tried to complete higher education at the University of Southern California in Theatre, Maine, but the zeal to start performing saw him dropping out a year after. He made his television debut as a guest star on The Lone Ranger, episode 28, known as Pay Dirt, before gaining a regular space as Drexel Potter on the sitcom The Stu Irwin Show. Teenage Milder depicted Whitney in Halls of Montezuma. That production also has Jack Webb as one of the cast. Webb was, at the time, still preparing his Dragnet radio show. Milner's meeting with Webb was significant in his career because the fellow would later cast him in his all-important police series, Adam-12. Milner did a two-year service in the United States Army, a period he spent much of his time at Fort Ord, California, a kind of art section of the Army's special services. I heard that while in the Army, Milner directed training movies and took part in dramas for the troops. While he was doing his stint, he met Clint Eastwood, who was serving as a lifeguard at the station. Like a bird of the same feather, they flocked together within the period. The duo would go on to become stars in their different capacities after the army service. When the army stint ended, Milner was fully ready to hit the screen more than ever, as he began a recurring role on The Life of Riley. The program ran for about five years, a period he also guest-starred in many television shows, including Wagon Train and Rawhide. His much-awaited breakthrough came in 1960 when Milner was played on the Route 66 television string, which was aired between 1960 and 1964. As produced by Sterling Silifant, Route 66 is an epitome of a rare creative survival instinct. The odd jobs alongside the engrossment with other people's issues were all carefully thought out with his travelling cohort who happens to be his father's ex-employee based on the storyline. Milner's character Todd, depicted as a fresh Yale graduate navigating across the United States, was more than fun. The filming was as mobile as the cast shot on location, so Milner spent close to four years travelling around the US for the series, and most times had carried his wife and kids along. This being the case, Milner gave little attention to the fan mails because he had more than enough company, so it did not matter if Maharis was getting more of the mail with the increasing inflow of fan mail. About Hollywood actor George Maharis, I heard that the star was once arrested in the mid-1970s and indicted for committing a wrongful act with a male hairstylist in the men's room of a gas station in Los Angeles. According to the report, a 46 years old Maharis had his name put down for a perversion charge, and released on bail after he paid a sum of $500 compulsory bail bond. That unfortunately was not the only incident that rubbed his name in the mud. Six years earlier, Maharis was also taken into custody by a vice squad officer for randy conduct in the restroom of a Hollywood eatery. The officer accused Maharis of making a pass at him. These separate incidents put a question mark on his personality on how or what may have transpired while he was working with Martin Milner, on the Route 66 show. Best remembered for his role as Murdoch, Maharis was said to have also posed clothless for Playgirl magazine the year preceding his arrest in the 1970s. How Maharis and Milner perfectly complemented each other inside a corvette, roving the countryside together, and often seen in their coats and tie attire, is also raising eyebrows. I still remember how he was dropped from the show, or do I say he left the show for no apparent reason, even though he got an Emmy nomination for his role. There are rumours that Maharis may have left the excitedly popular show because of issues regarding his sexuality. There is not much fact on that, however, since very little is available to ascertain the veracity of the gossip. I can't do any form of assumption on this, though there have been several theories from fans and related stakeholders suggesting the same. I still recall Maharis saying that he had been infected with hepatitis in 1962 
and that the production process was so demanding that he did not think it was wise for him to continue because of his health, and that he had asked its producers to allocate him a less difficult timetable, but they would not, the reason he left the show as Glenn Corbett suddenly stepped in for the role. Whether that was the case or not would be a subject for another day. There are, however, hints that suggest a different scenario. I once read a report insinuating that Route 66 producer Herbert B. Leonard shockingly discovered that Maharis had a homosexual inclination that was already a media gossip topic at the time. He had a tough time keeping his actors' private activities away from the media. It seems Maharis at some point got frustrated with his bottled-up emotion during that show that he salted for a way out, and as Leonard stated, he used the subject of his illness as an excuse to end his contract for the production of the show, so he could try Hollywood movies. Martin Milner, who paired with him in that production, would also confirm this version of the story, suggesting that he may have encountered him severally while they were working together. My curiosity is high at this time as I try to wonder what it was like for Milner to work closely with such a character. Is it the reason he had to carry his wife and kids along? Perhaps so he doesn't fall into temptation. Although Maharis later acted in movies and on-stage roles, none equals his success as Buzz on Route 66, and interestingly the TV show never recovered from the shock of Maharis's departure. This, critic said, stems from the fact that he may have made a perfect twosome with Milner. Still on why Maharis left the show, an independent investigation revealed that the two reasons mentioned above contributed to his withdrawal from the project. It was reasonable to say that the producers felt let down and deceived when they got wind of Maharis's predisposition. Not only that they never trusted him again, Maharis on his own felt troubled that his performance was doing well, but no requisite appreciation from those he was working for. Naturally, he got tired of it, made worse by the fact that he fell ill within the period which he attributed to the working conditions he was placed in. Something he interpreted to mean an arrangement by the producers to tell him either make more money for them or get out of this contract. Analysts say in a less homophobic time of ours the producers might have communicated better, but of course not in the 1960s that the unconventional sexual concept was still pretty odd. Sometime in the mid-1950s Milner met and fell in love with beautiful singer and actress Judith Best Jones, the one I love to call Judy. The two had met at a Hollywood dinner party and Judy was smitten by the handsome gentleman. Not too long after they began an affair. Their romance was cemented in matrimony, somewhere in Welkigan, Illinois. From all indications, it's obvious that the couple lived happily in a union that produced four kids, Amy, Millie, Stuart and Andrew. Critics say Martin Milner is one of those that is keenly admired in the way he tactfully handled his family, while also excelling in his acting career. He also tried to accommodate and grow a family of performers, the reason one of his daughters had guest starred in an episode of the highly remarkable Adam Twelve. It's a known fact that Milner's family had an impact on the major role he played in that production. Like I said earlier, his chance meeting with Jack Webb when they appeared in the same movie ensured that Milner got the key part in Adam Twelve. Appearing as a co-lead on Adam Twelve, Webb cast Milner as a cop behind the wheel, mainly because of what he saw him do with the Cherokee Corvette on Route 66, an experienced driving talent he felt could be useful in his production, and it did even more wonderful than he anticipated. It was in the Season 7 episode titled Victim of the Crime that Milner's daughter Amy interpreted a part as the daughter of a shopkeeper that becomes a victim of a robbery. That role was nice and brief, but of course happened to be the only on-screen credit Amy had. Perhaps Milner was performing and thinking of how to incorporate his young family into the show, because we also saw his teenage son as a stunt driver on the show. That should be precisely in the Season 6 episode, Northwest Division. Viewers saw the officers chase a miner who speeded across the city on his minibike. That was Milner's son in action, ensuring that Andrew joined Amy and their father Martin Milner as a family in providing the requisite fun that made the show a hit. Martin Milner died at the age of 83. Shortly after, the Los Angeles Police Department honoured him with a special ceremony that had his family members in attendance. The LAPD boss had delivered a touching speech on that occasion, 
saying he represented a hard-working, clean-cut, impeccably tailored, fit Los Angeles police officer. Prepare to be amazed as we delve into the incredible triumph of Marie Blanchard, who defied all odds and conquered paralysis to embrace a daring life under the big top. <laughs> 